Hi everyone. Today let's talk logic in this Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest Enrichment class on logic for grade four. Let's get started. Straight off the bat with a question. The students of a small class are going rowing. In the first boat, there are five boys, and in the second boat, there are five girls. After some time, John and Joe, two boys, move to the second boat. A little bit later, two children move from the second boat to the first one. Which of the following is certainly true about the children in the first boat? Is it that most of them are girls? Is it that the number of girls and the number of boys is the same in the first boat? Is it that there are more than five children in the first boat? Is it that the number of boys in the first boat is equal to the number of girls in the second boat? Or is it that they're all boys? Take a second now, pause the video, solve this question, write out whatever you need, jot some things on a piece of paper, have a solution already, commit to an answer, and then unpause the video and join us for a solution. Are you ready? Let's take it up. Here's the scenario as it started. In the first boat, there are five boys, and in the second boat, there are five girls. I'm going to draw this out in a table. Here are five nameless boys in the first boat and five nameless girls in the second boat. What happens next? After some time, John and Joe move to the second boat. The first boat now has three boys, and the second boat has five girls, John and Joe, the two boys who have moved. A little bit later, two children move from the second boat to the first one. Finally, some ambiguity, right? Here we have options. In fact, there are three possible scenarios that could be unfolding right this minute. I'm gonna draw them on my little table here. Here they are. It could be that John and Joe decided, eh, I don't like this boat very much, and they moved back into boat one. It could be that one of John or Joe moved back, along with a girl, into boat one. Or it could be that John and Joe stayed where they were, and two girls have instead moved into boat one. So now some ambiguity resides. We have three bottom rows of my table, representing three possible scenarios that are happening right now. We are asked what is certainly true about the children in the first boat, regardless of which of the three scenarios we're in. Is it that most of them are girls? No, it could be that um, we have five boys and no girls in the boat, or four boys or three boats. boys. Definitely not, most of them are girls. Is it that the number of girls and the number of boys is the same? <laughs> Unlikely for a boat with five people in it, right? Again, not true. Is it that there are more than five children in the boat? Nope. Two moved back, two moved forward, still five in total. Is it that the number of boys is equal to the number of girls in the second boat? That's the most complicated one, so let's skip it for now. Or is it that they're all boys in boat one? Definitely not that one. So by the process of elimination, it's certainly looking like D, right? But let's try and parse this complicated sentence. The number of boys in boat two is equal to the number of girls in, sorry, the number of boys in boat one is equal to the number of girls in boat two. Is that true? Yes, it is. And this is a beautiful aspect of this problem. Right? We could have had five boys in boat one, five girls in boat two, four boys in boat one, one girl, four girls in boat two, and one of Joe or John. Or we could have had three boys in boat one, three girls in boat two. Notice I misspoke a little bit earlier there because of course this is equivalent to saying the number of girls in boat one is equal to the number of boys in boat two. You see this problem sometimes floating around. It's very pretty. We have this idea of symmetry, which we can use. You can use this in some card tricks, actually. Next question. Kelly, Richard, and Jocelyn are old classmates. During a recent gathering, they told each other about their occupations. Among them, there is a police officer, a clerk, and an engineer. 
Below are some hints about their occupations. We know Kelly is older than the police officer. Richard's age is not the same as the clerk's. And the clerk is younger than Jocelyn. Which of the following statements is true? Is it A, that Jocelyn is a police officer? B, that Richard is an engineer? C, that Kelly is not a clerk? D, that Jocelyn is an engineer? Or are none of the statements true? Take a second now, probably a couple of minutes, pause the video, draw out some charts, figure out some tables, come back to us with an answer for who Kelly, Richard, and Jocelyn might be in terms of occupations. And then hit unpause or play, and we'll take this up together. Are you ready? This is one of a very famous kinds of logic problems with occupations, and I quite enjoy doing them. Let's look at the hints one by one once again. Our first hint is that Kelly is older than the police officer. Right away, that implies that Kelly is not the police officer. She can't be older than herself. So I'm going to build a table where the columns are going to represent occupations. And in the rows for each person, I'm going to jot down their name only if they might belong to that occupation. And I may have to cross out names or erase names later on. So for now, Kelly can't be a police officer. She could still be a clerk or an engineer. Next, we have that Richard's age is not the same as the clerk's. Great, that means Richard can't be a clerk. Here we go, he could be a police officer, could be an engineer. Next, we see that the clerk is younger than Jocelyn. Well, that means that Jocelyn can't be the clerk either. So right away, we know who the clerk is. There's only one name in that entire column. The clerk must be Kelly. Kelly is the clerk. Great, we can erase her from the engineer column. What next? What else is it that we know? We know that Kelly is older than the police officer, and the clerk, who is Kelly, is younger than Jocelyn. So Kelly's the clerk, and Kelly is younger than Jocelyn since the clerk is. What does that tell us? Well, we also know that Kelly is older than the police officer, and yet she is younger than Jocelyn. So Jocelyn can't be a police officer, which forces Richard to be a police officer and forces Jocelyn to be the engineer. Which of these statements is true? Once again, the answer is D, Jocelyn is an engineer with those little bits of information, right? Just three simple sentences. We managed to parse this entire logic problem, crack it wide open. I love these puzzles. How about this one? Five people are in a line. Each of them is either a knight or a liar. A knight always tells the truth, a liar always lies, duh. Everyone said something, nobody stayed quiet. So the first four to speak, said one after another, the next to speak is a liar. So imagine this, five people are standing in line, first four speak up and they go, the next to speak is a liar, the next to speak is a liar, the next to speak is a liar, the next to speak is a liar. And the fifth to speak said, all five of us are liars. With just that information, how many liars are there among these five people? Again, you know the drill by now. Please pause the video, solve it yourself or attempt to, and then come back and listen through the solution. Are you ready? Let's do it. Examining the first statement, the next to speak is a liar. What can happen there? If I'm a truth teller and I say that, the person who speaks after me must be a liar. If I'm a liar and I say that, the next person to speak after me must be a truth teller or a knight in, as we call them in this problem. So it seems like in those first four statements we must be alternating liar, knight, liar, knight or knight, liar, knight, liar. Right? They must be alternating by the rules of the game. Great. The fifth person says all five of us are liars. So even though at the moment we don't know what is happening among the four people, 
right? We don't know if it is night liar, night liar, or if it is liar, night, liar, night. We know that there are two liars and two nights among the first four people. So when the fifth person says all five of us are liars, gotta be lying, right? That's not true. We can see at least two are nights. So the fifth person is also a liar. Curiously, even though we don't have to know that, um, we now actually know the full sequence, right? So first things first, let's answer the problem and then we'll go exploring. We know that this is going to be two liars among the first four people plus a fifth person to be a liar. Three people in total are liars. But we also know more than that. We know the full sequence because in order for this to be true, the last person had to have said the correct statement, the next to speak is a liar, before the fifth person spoke up and was a liar. So indeed the scenario is liar night, liar night, liar. That's the only possible explanation for what happened here. Either way, we've answered the question already, three liars, answer is A. Thank you very much for listening. Hope to see you in class one day. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week ahead. Keep mathing and keep logicking things out. Bye.